Welcome to the Bentley Systems training course where we are going to show you how to model loads and load combinations in RAM Elements Connect Edition. In this video, we are going to focus on modeling the self-weight of the structure to consider the member properties acting in the vertical direction as a dead load, and we are going to show you how to model forces at nodes in the model, which could either be in the form of a force or a moment. We will now turn our attention back to our sample model. For this first exercise, we're going to be defining the self-weight of the structure. The first step in this process is to determine your active load condition. To do that, we're going to go down to your load conditions pop-up menu in the status bar at the bottom of the screen, and we're going to make sure that a dead load case is currently selected. Next, we're going to go over to the data panel and select the general tab, followed by the self-weight icon. Now the vertical axis in RAM elements is the y-axis and the positive direction is pointing up. So what we want to do is instruct RAM elements that the gravity load should be acting in the negative y direction. We can simply do that by clicking on the enable self-weight in the negative y direction icon that's available in the spreadsheet tab of the ribbon. Now you're going to notice that the y multiplier is automatically going to turn to negative 1, which means that now self-weight will be considered within the current dead load case. RAM elements will now be able to calculate and apply the self-weight of the structure using the section properties and materials that were assigned to each particular member and shell element in the model. Next, we're going to show you how to model nodal loads in RAM elements. To do this, we're going to return to our data panel and select our nodes tab followed by our forces and moments icon. Now for each nodal load, you can define several different variables. The first three variables, the fx, fy, and fz, are used to define the nodal forces acting in the directions of the global x, y, and z axes. Adjacent to that, you're also going to have your mx, my, and mz, and these are used to define moments acting around the global axis. The first step in our process, once we're at this location in the program, is to select the load case that you choose to model your loads according to. And for this model, we're going to go ahead and select the dead load case. Your second step would be to select the nodes you want to apply these forces to. You may find it's easier to rotate your model to take a look at a different perspective to make the selection easier. For this particular model, I'm going to view my front XY view of the model. And to get this pop-up menu, I can just simply right click in the display area. Now I can go ahead and unselect everything by clicking anywhere within the display area. And then I can draw a fence around the nodes I choose to select. You're going to notice once I select those nodes, they're now going to appear in the data panel. For nodal loads, I'm going to enter the load directly into the data panel, and I'm going to apply a vertically downward acting force of 0.5 kips. To add a negative sign in front of this load means it'll be a downward acting load, and it's in the global y direction. In addition to that, if I wanted to take a look at what units this was being applied to, whenever your cursor is in a particular field, your units will be displayed in the upper right-hand corner of your data panel. Now I could go ahead and apply this load to each individually selected node, but I also have several different tools available in the data panel used to copy information from one cell to another and also used to maybe filter some of the items within the data panel. To copy some information, I can go ahead and say fill current column with the value at the cursor location. So my cursor is in the FY field of my currently selected node. I'm going to click this tool and you can see that that same load will be applied to all the currently selected nodes. If I want to view those loads graphically on my screen, I'm going to go to the View tab in my ribbon and select the Loads icon, and then I can see those load arrows. This is especially a good way to check to make sure you applied the load considering the right direction. If you wanted to see the value assigned to those loads, you can use the pull-down menu and select the Show Value option. Lastly, if you want to clean up your display, we can go up to reset our display using the turn off all display options icon available in the quick access toolbar.
If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.